Welcome to Books for Success. Today, we're delving into the wisdom within, I'm Glad My Mom Died, by Jeanette McCurdy. Discover the dark side of Jeanette McCurdy, a former Nickelodeon pop star, and learn what celebrity families and the entertainment industry are hiding behind the curtains. You'll learn. 1. How Nickelodeon Exploited Child Stars. 2. Why Jeanette Struggled with an Eating Disorder. 3. About McCurdy's Abusive Mother. 4. Jeanette's Story of Recovery. Subscribe and ring the bell for notifications if you want to keep receiving the knowledge of book summaries about health, wealth, love, psychology, and much more. Don't be shy about dropping your book suggestions for us to summarize. Also, you can use this video as an audiobook summary. Let's grow and succeed together. Make your mom's dreams come true. It's little Jeanette's sixth birthday party. Everyone is there. Her grandparents, three older brothers, dad, and, of course, mom. Mom is the most important. She and Jeanette are best friends. She unwraps her birthday gift. Jeanette hates this two-piece item her mom bought for her, but she can't disappoint. The girl imitates her best fake smile, asserting it's her favorite gift. Now, it's her turn to make a birthday wish. Jeanette wants her mom to stay alive for one more year. Jeanette was two when her mom was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer. Gladly, she recovered, but even years later, she couldn't stop dwelling on the experience. Her mom would repeat her story to anyone who would listen, from her family to strangers on the street. She would often sit her children in a circle and play old VHS tapes over and over again, picturing her lying in the hospital, bold and weak. This ritual made Jeanette and her brothers uncomfortable, but it gave their mom pleasure to return to these traumatic years as something to be proud of. Nevertheless, Jeanette shared an unbreakable bond with her mother. She had a special mission, to fulfill all the dreams her mom couldn't. One of those dreams was to be an actress, a chance her grandparents denied their daughter. That's why Jeanette's mom wanted the best for her girl, to have the life she never had and become mommy's little actress. This summary follows multiple stories from Jeanette's complicated childhood, revealing a life of fame and success on the one hand and abuse and trauma on the other. Child actors have no time for childhood. Jeanette's mom was determined to make her dream come true. Her little girl would be a big star. All big stars started small, and so did Jeanette. Her first jobs were minor background roles in shows and movies. Her mom often emphasized her numerous and significant sacrifices in the name of Jeanette's career, like overcoming her fear of highways and heroically making a two-hour drive to LA to bring Jeanette to auditions. The situation at home was not exactly relaxing either. Money was a problem for Jeanette's family. Even with her dad working two jobs, their rent payments were always late. Her parents' relationship was on edge, too. Her mom would often get hysterical and blame her dad for not paying enough attention to the family. Jeanette witnessed dozens of fights, often physical, which ended in her father's exile from the house. She craved a sense of connection with her dad, just like the one with her mom, but he appeared too distant and distraught. The atmosphere in the house was often chaotic. After making a cancer recovery, her mom became obsessed with stuff. Their rooms were filled floor to ceiling with so many things that the children had to sleep on the mats in the living room. Church became a single place of refuge for Jeanette. She loved escaping the house on Sundays, her Mormon family unfailingly attended services since her mom's diagnosis. In the meantime, her acting career was picking up the pace. Jeanette exhibited the two traits necessary for any child actor, cooperation and submission. However, Getting noticed by a few directors was not enough for her mom, who was willing to take her daughter's career to the next level. Fortunately, the famous agent Barbara Cameron was ready to represent Jeanette under one condition attending acting classes. The girl hated performing in front of everyone, especially her mom. She was always there, watching her, judging, and making comments on what to improve. Despite this, Jeanette finally booked her first speaking role, hoping this would eventually make mom happy growing success and growing problems. Jeanette booked one role after another, getting callbacks for most of those she auditioned for. The stakes grew higher when another star manager, Susan Curtis, agreed to represent her. But her growing success was never enough for her mom. Jeanette's mom did whatever it took to make this career work, from forcing her to attend castings with a high fever to crying on cue. For example, 
Crying on cue caused the girl a great deal of pain because it required reliving the most traumatic experiences in her life. She felt like a circus animal doing it, but it made her stand out as a child actor. Jeanette finally confessed her true feelings to mom. She didn't want to act anymore. The next thing she saw was her mom crying hysterically, you can't quit. Jeanette's attempt at presenting her self-written screenplay also failed her mom would never allow her to switch careers. Other family members sensed Jeanette's tension. She deserved to be a kid and have fun, her grandfather insisted. Jeanette wondered, what is fun? She was not allowed to go outside alone anymore, as her mom convinced herself that someone would kidnap her. Like what had happened with other child stars. So she had her little rituals at home, which her relatives suspected looked like a potential obsessive compulsive disorder. But Jeanette knew, this voice in her head belonged to the Holy Ghost, advising her what to do to ensure success. Aside from the tension and stress, Jeanette never felt right in her body from an early age. Mom was concerned with Jeanette's appearance, claiming that her natural beauty needed fixing. Store-bought makeup was one of the go-to solutions. For some roles, her appearance was not ethereal enough, and she was too pretty for others. Her mom completely controlled Jeanette's body, not allowing her to shower alone until she turned 16. Jeanette believed she had to remain her mom's little girl. The first signs of growing breasts terrified her, so she asked her mom for advice. What should she do to stay small? It was apparent, calorie restriction. Her mom survived off steamed vegetables and granola bars and taught her daughter all the secrets of keeping her weight down. Jeanette heard others voicing concerns about anorexia but had no idea what this word meant. It didn't matter anyway, as she achieved the ultimate success, Jeanette booked iCarly. iCarly. Fame, anorexia, and harassment. An iCarly role would finally make mom happy, right? Jeanette was now getting show-sponsored baskets full of food, $100 gift cards, and other pleasant surprises. Miranda Cosgrove, the lead child actor, was incredibly friendly to her. But mom warned Jeanette against Miranda. She listened to dangerous music and didn't believe in God. Despite mom's concerns, Jeanette got on Om, a messenger where she and Miranda texted incessantly and became real friends. Meanwhile, the show's creator was demanding. Everything needed to be done how he wanted. From filming in a bikini as a child to having her first kiss on camera, Jeanette felt highly uncomfortable. She didn't want to look or act sexually, but the choice was not hers. The creator could quickly switch from his positive to terrifying side, insulting and humiliating people. It was better to stay away from angering him. That's why Jeanette said nothing when he offered her a drink as an underage girl or gave her a massage. The creator rewarded her agreeableness, offering Jeanette her show in a few years. No matter what the price was, it made her mom happy. As iCarly money brought more stability to the family, her mom finally became less anxious. There were no more collector calls or late bills she had to take care of. Jeanette's body also satisfied her, as she kept to her special restrictive diet. Unfortunately for her, Jeanette was soon breaking out and getting her first period. Because of this, she had to try even harder to preserve anorexia and remain a kid. Growing up was out of the question. At the same time, all the countless talk shows, red carpets, and random strangers became the next thing stressing her out. Everyone recognized her wherever she went, she was becoming progressively overwhelmed and lonely. And, since her career took off and her mom's health stabilized, the family stopped attending church. At times, Jeanette felt she hated her mom, which was new for her. She didn't choose this life, her mom did. Her dream finally came true at the price of her own happiness. Finding liberation in separation. Jeanette was almost 18 now. As iCarly shootings had a short break, her mom decided to kickstart her daughter's musical career all teen actors did it back then. Things seemed to go well until the horrible truth resurfaced. Her mom's cancer was back. Jeanette had to go on her first tour all alone. During the tour, Jeanette realized how exhausting it was to adjust or try to please her mom constantly. Her habits changed, too, she started eating a lot. When her mom was not around to judge and restrict her, Jeanette enjoyed eating various foods in large quantities. But a deep sense of guilt was inseparable from enjoyment. The pounds Jeanette gained were the first thing her mom noticed upon her return. Mom was not getting better, she had lost weight and all of her hair and was now using a wheelchair. But, 
Despite getting sicker, she didn't leave the attempts to control her daughter. Just when Jeanette was about to move into her solo apartment, her plan failed terribly. Mom innocently asked to stay for one night and never left. Spending so much time on set, Jeanette got close with one of her co-workers, Joe, a guy in his 30s. He ultimately broke up with his girlfriend to be with Jeanette, a relationship her mom would never approve of. After being together for more than a year, they were still in hiding. But when her mom moved back to California for her cancer treatments, Jeanette found it was easier to conceal her relationship, although she called her 10 times a day. But one show-sponsored trip to Hawaii changed it all. Paparazzi took photos of them together just when Jeanette let her guard down. The images were all over the internet an hour later, followed by dozens of missed calls and angry emails from her mother. She called Jeanette all kinds of insults, from ugly monster to devil child, threatening the family would disown her. Her mom even went as far as to post gossip about Jeanette on her fan groups, asking fans to flee from her. Jeanette wanted to discuss things, but her mom never brought the situation up in person, pretending it never happened. After this episode, their communication became very distant, reduced to polite and surface-level small talk. Mom's death and the aftermath. Later that year, Jeanette organized a birthday dinner for her mom. Everything seemed to go well until Jeanette saw her mom convulsing. A brain tumor caused a seizure, and she lay in ICU, unresponsive for a week. Jeanette stayed in the hospital for long hours every day. Burger King was one of the fastest options for lunch nearby. And the moment her mom woke up from a coma, she remarked Jeanette shouldn't be eating anything with such a high fat content. Her mom's condition discouraged Jeanette from binging, so she was losing weight rapidly. At the same time, she befriended alcohol. It made all her worries disappear, at least while she was drunk. Her mom had been in hospice care for weeks until her dad called Jeanette to come down for that day. She witnessed her mom pass away. All the media outlets broke the story a minute later. Jeanette started channeling all of her grief toward her eating disorder. She was determined to keep this mission up in honor of her mom. Bulimia became her new escape. Even if she made the mistake of eating something bad, she could easily undo it. She tried multiple ways of restricting herself from food, like spraying perfume on her burgers, but nothing worked. Bulimia was working for her, she got compliments on her appearance like never before. The more miserable she felt in her body, the more praise she received for it. Jeanette's work life didn't satisfy her either. The creator promised she would have her own show years ago, but now she was co-starring with Ariana Grande in Sam and Cat. Busy with her rising music career, Ariana often didn't show up to film the episodes. Jeanette became increasingly angry for getting caught up in this mess, she hated her Sam persona. But she endured it because this spin-off offered her the ability to direct several episodes. It didn't take long to discover that getting her own show was just another industry lie. Jeanette counted the days until the show was over, but a story surfaced. Nickelodeon was dealing with emotional abuse allegations against the creator. Jeanette also got a call, offering her $300,000 to stay silent about her experiences with the creator. She rejected the money with no doubt. Ultimately, another sexual harassment claim closed the show down. A tough and never-ending road to recovery. Soon after the show closed, Netflix offered Jeanette a starring role. She met Steven there, their relationship mattered much to Jeanette. He genuinely cared for her, he took her bulimia very seriously. She didn't want to lose him, so turning to a therapist was the only option. Laura was ready to provide Jeanette with all the emotional support needed to deal with her disorder. But going to therapy scared Jeanette. There was no other way but to confront her alcoholism and bulimia. One of the conversations eventually led to her mom. Was she a good mother or an abuser? Questioning her mother's authority was unbearable for Jeanette, and she quit therapy immediately. The personal drama didn't end for her at this point. Her usually distant father was doing surprisingly well since her mom passed away, and she wondered why that could be. One day, he gathered the children to uncover the secret their mom never did, he was not their biological father. Years ago, their mom had an affair with a trombone player doing soundtracks for Hollywood movies and shows. Everyone was shocked. Why didn't their mom tell them before she died? Jeanette found her biological father in one of the jazz clubs he played in, he immediately recognized her. She uncovered the truth. 
Their mom lied to the court that he was physically abusive and won a custody battle back when they were little. Meanwhile, Jeanette was reaching a breaking point with her bulimia. Losing a tooth was the last drop before turning to Jeff, an eating disorder specialist. Jeff learned of her food habits and was determined to normalize her eating. The progress was slow but steady. But as she got better, Stephen got worse. His newly discovered schizophrenia required him to take medications, adding to his heavy dependence on weed. Jeanette tried to help him return the favor, immersing himself deeper into this codependent relationship. Eventually, she realized that breaking up was the only way out. Jeanette was now rediscovering her true desires. She took an indefinite break from acting, prioritized mental health, and decided to write again. This time gave her space to reassess her relationship with her mother and the childhood she never had because of her profoundly controlling and abusive behaviors. Jeanette could finally see her mom for the person that she was. Conclusion Years after Jeanette's mom died from cancer, the young woman started rediscovering the unseen story of her childhood. Forced to work as a child actress since she was six, Jeanette did everything to make her mom's dream come true. She constantly tried to adhere to her mom's standards and expectations but was never able to reach them or satisfy her mom. At the same time, she never got a chance to explore her wishes and desires as a child. From teaching her child an eating disorder from a young age to forcing her to work a job to sustain an entire family, her mom was a deeply manipulative, abusive, and controlling person. Stuck in a career she hated, Jeanette felt vulnerable and unprotected in the face of her mother. The industry was also happy to exploit her, no matter how violated she felt. After years of therapy, Jeanette realized how putting her mom on a pedestal harmed her well-being and self-esteem. She could never get those years back, but uncovering the truth empowered her to choose her own life path. Jeanette's recovery journey was challenging, but she's happy she started it. Try this. 1. It can be therapeutic to revise the history of your childhood and also explore the stories of others on that account. 2. Visit Jeanette's podcast, Empty Inside, which touches on uncomfortable topics with different guests, or her one-woman show, I'm Glad My Mom Died, at LA Theaters for a deeper dive into her reflections. Thanks for being part of our insightful voyage. If our summary piqued your interest, we encourage you to dive into the complete book for a deeper understanding. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe for more content if you're new here, and share it with others who might find it valuable. Keep on reading, discovering, and advancing until our next adventure.